Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to show you how to automate part of the deep mob learning process, uh, specifically the loot fabricator and the simulation chamber. Uh, these components can help provide you a lot of hard-to-get materials uh, and loot in the game relatively early, and is a great resource of different items. So uh, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button, so that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. All right. So a couple things we're going to need today. We're going to start with a blank data model, which is four lapis, a gold ingot, stone, redstone repeater, and two soot-covered redstone. Next, we need a deep learner, which is four soot-covered plates, soot-covered redstone, glass pane, and three redstone repeaters. We need a simulation chamber, which is two lapis, two ender pearls, a redstone comparator, soot-covered machine casing, and a glass pane. We need the loop fabricator, which is two dandelion yellow, two diamond, redstone comparator, soot-covered machine casing, and a gold ingot. And we're going to need some polymer, which is four clay balls, gold ingot, lapis, and an iron ingot. Now, um, I have done a tutorial introducing the basics of deep mob learning that I will link down in the description of this tutorial. Uh, if you've not seen that one first or you're new to deep mob learning, I would check out that one before the part we're kind of doing now. Um, so this is the part here we're looking to automate. This is our simulation chamber, and this is our loop fabricator. They will need a power source. I'm just using a creative battery in this, but any RF source is fine. Any gener generator, reactor, uh, solar, any power source you like will work. Uh, these do use quite a bit of power, so um, I would recommend, you know, supplying them with a, a quite a bit up front. So um, we said we needed an, a blank data model. We're actually going to need a specific one. Let's go ahead and grab some parts here. We're going to start with this. I have a zombie data model. I have a deep mob learner, and I have a, a sword for the fun of it. So to get um, the data model of your choice, right, go into the JEI, and each data model available from deep mob learning is a combination of the blank data model I showed you how to make and an item. So we're going to do zombie data model, blank item, and a rotten flesh. But there's many different ones, creepers, gunpowder, slime is a slime ball. But for this one today, we're going to use a zombie data model. Okay? going to right click on your deep learner you're going to put your data model inside it's going to tell us that right now it is at faulty and i need to defeat six more zombies to get it to basic now for this process to work we're doing today your data model has to be at least on basic you can make it higher should you need to or if you already have one that's above basic that's fine but this will not work on a faulty level you'll have to kill at least six zombies or six of the monsters you're using to get this to work so we're going to go ahead and drop <laughs> Zombies here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a little guy for fun. Down the bottom, you'll see that we have. Oh, and a chicken. Oh, come here, chicken. Uh, so, down in the bottom, you'll see zombie data model has reached the basic tier. And that's what we needed. So, we're going to go ahead and right click on our deep learner, pull it back out. Okay. So all those things we just used, except for the data model, and of course, the stuff that dropped, are no longer needed. We're not going to need our. So we're not going to use our deep learner any longer. Okay? What we are going to grab are some extraction cables, chests, regular item cables, and some polymer. Okay? So um, the way I have this set up, I leave a space between the simulation chamber and the loot fabricator. And I put the simulation chamber on top. Can do these side by side with a space between. That would also still work. I find for space, this is a little better way to do it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take an item extraction cable. And we need to put it two spaces above this. I'm going to go ahead and grab a block here. Stone to make a spacer. That. And then we're going to put a chest. That. Then we're going to put in our item extraction cable. Turn it up all the way. So inside of our simulation chamber, you're going to place your data model in the upper left. This here on the left is showing you how many monsters or zombies or whatever it is that you fought and what it is. I'm at 448 towards the next tier. Now, once you provide it polymer clay, it will start running a simulation. In other words, it's pretending it's fighting a zombie for you. Here you'll see that it has a 5% chance 
of creating pristine. So pristine zombie um, material is what you would get if this is successful, and it'll pop over here. In every simulation it runs, you'll get some type of matter up here. In this one, zombies make overworldian matter. Okay, So it can take a little bit for this with only a 5% chance to get a hold of a pristine matter. We're going to give that a minute. While we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started by up here. We can go ahead and put in this top chest our polymer clay. And it's going to automatically fill this up. So if you have an automated polymer setting, which I have a tutorial showing how to do that, I will link down in the description as well. You could connect it here to automatically continuously run, or you can just refill this occasionally so you don't have to put in 64 every time. So the next step that we're going to do is we need to go in here and we're going to go ahead and stop this for a moment. All right? We're going to go ahead and pull our overworlding matter out. We're going to put an extraction cable on the front, turn it up all the way. We're going to put one on the bottom, turn it up all the way. Then we're going to put one on the front of this, turn it up all the way as well. So here we go. Three extraction cables. In this first one up here, we're going to whitelist overworlding matter. So it's going to pull the overworlding matter out of the front. Underneath, we want a blacklist overworldian matter. We don't want it coming down. We only want it coming out of the front. So now we'll go ahead and we'll fire back up our data model. And we're going to let that run for a minute until we get ourselves a pristine zombie model. All right. And as you can see there, it says that it succeeded. But you don't see any pristine zombie material here because it's already moved through our extraction cables. So we had a successful one. You'll also notice that as the data is collected, it's actually going to level up the tiers for you. So once you get it into basic, you can put it in here and leave it. It will eventually max itself out through all of the simulations. Now we go down here. So our pristine zombie matter has gone down here, and it's telling us these are the things we can trade it for. I'll well, say we're relatively early game, and I want to get a hold of some iron. So I'm going to go ahead and click iron. It's then going to change that. And it, a second one dropped at the same time, and it would normally pull it over to here. So now that this is pulling our overworldian matter out, oh, one fell on the ground here, and uh, the uh, matter is giving us our iron, we just drop a chest here, just connect this to there. Now we look inside, you'll see that it's pulling our iron and our overworldian matter. At any time, if I wish to change what this is, you just click on the click to remove, and then choose the picture you, or the item you want, and it will start producing that as well. So from here, you can run this into a chest or your storage unit of choice, uh, filing cabinet, simple storage unit, ME, whatever you prefer to use. But that will basically automate this as long as you keep this full of polymer or you have an automated polymer setup. So this will automatically run. But let's see if we can do this on a larger scale. So here I have a compact machine. Go inside and grab our shrinking device. And let's see what we can do with a bigger picture. Like this. All right, so here we are inside, and as you can see, I've already set up an automated system. Oops. Second, the lava here can be very loud whenever you're using a uh, automated system. I recommend throwing a sound muffler down just to make it a little quiet. That's going to that's going to remove all the sound from inside this compact machine. So here, as you can see, I have multiple simulation chambers, multiple loot fabricators. I have multiple chests that are providing polymer in. The items are going inside, running them. As you can see, this one's all the way up to superior. Coming down here, trading it in for, in this situation, I'm trading it for some inferior essence, and then moving everything into this chest. <clears throat> so you can see there's a lot of different stuff that I'm trading it for, from wither skulls, gas tears, iron, plus all of the matter it's making. This is the same setup. Let's bring the polymer in from the top, pulling the overworldian matter or hellish matter, whatever matter it takes out. And then the pristine goes down into our loot fabricator, providing us with a material of our choice. I'm doing iron. And then that item is coming into here. And then here I can have this running out through a tunnel outside of my compact machine, again, going into a system, any system I like. Now, we're going to go ahead and set just a couple of these up to give you an example. Um, you're going to notice something here that uh, you may not have dealt with before. It turns out this is not a common piece of knowledge I've learned. So we're going to kind of take a look at it. So we're going to start here. We're going to grab ourselves a wither skeleton data model. That's the one we're going to work with. Right now it's at basic, so it's ready to go. So we're going to set this up the same way we did before. I got some polymer in here. All we have to do is we have to connect these. So 
I'm going to put an extraction cable here. Extraction cable here, extraction cable here, just like we did before. This one crank up all the way, doesn't need whitelist or blacklist. This one, we're going to need to whitelist because we want our certain matter to come out. And then coming down here, another one, we're going to blacklist that. Let's go ahead and turn this on by throwing our model in there. And we'll let it run through one simulation so we can get ourselves a little bit of the matter that it produces so we can then process our whitelisting and blacklisting. So give this just a moment. Failed, which is normal. All right, so it's not pulling any of the matter out because we haven't whitelisted or blacklisted. It's automatically pulling it out there, okay? So let's go ahead and real quickly do this. And that's not the one, that's not the one, that's the one, there we are. We got our, hell our hellish matter. So we might wanna, in retrospect, it would probably be better to go ahead and get your first simulation done before you add these ones right here. That is my mistake. Uh, so get yourself a simulation run, then go ahead and add these extraction cables. I did it backwards. And of course, take that out to stop it while you're working on this. On the one on the front, we're going to whitelist our hellish matter or overworldian matter, whichever matter it makes. Underneath, we're going to blacklist that because we only want our pristine to come down there. And on the front here, it doesn't matter because it's only going to pull out the finished product. So once we have that, we can go ahead and put our data model back in. And now it's just a matter of kind of like over here, connecting these so we can run them to our storage system. We'll just say hypothetically, we're going to run this one right down here to this chest. Okay. So now the, the matter that that's making is going in there as well. Okay. We're going to connect it down here as well. And of course, once we get, we'll keep an eye on it. And once we get our first piece of pristine, we can choose what we want and that will complete that setup. Now, a lot of people are going to want to, like I do have this setup. I'm running just a geothermal on a infinite lava loop on each side. That should be enough power to run one side of simulations. You could also do another layer above this or add more geothermals in the sides here. If you wanted to have more power, you find it's not producing quite enough. There's a lot of room in here to increase the amount that you have. Um, but one thing I wanna show specifically is how these pipes are not connecting. Normally, if you put two cables next to each other, they will, but you'll see these yellow squares. That's why I have a redstone torch. With a redstone torch, you can basically weld or solder or sever pipes or connecting cable ability to link. So if I right click on the side of this cable, it goes yellow. Right click again and it comes off. Let's see why we did that. So I don't have the yellow one there now. Put this here, you'll see that they are connected, right? Regardless of where I put that. Well, I don't want these to connect. I want this to go to that directly into this system only. So if I go ahead and make that yellow with a redstone torch, that means this section will no longer connect to another pipe. I can put another extraction cable right here. Turn it up so that my polymer is going in. But you'll see these have not connected. If I want to put another one here, I would do the same thing on this side. I will use a redstone torch. Just right click, and that will close that pipe's ability to connect on this side. It'll still connect on this side or the top or the bottom, but that side is severed. And you can sever more than one side, do all of them if you don't want it to connect with anything. And then just right click again and takes it off. As you see over here, I've done that on every connection so that the pipes do not combine during the initial process, especially down here. I don't want my matter coming down from one of these and feeding into the wrong machine. So by separating them, I just realized that one's backwards. Whoops, but <laughs> either way, uh, I, don't, I don't want these connected. So this is a great way to keep your pipes from connecting when you don't want them to. So that way uh, processes or items don't move into the wrong one. This will also work on the cyclic fluid cables and the cyclic energy cables. So you can use this to add or remove a block to connection on any cyclic cable. But then all we have to do is just repeat that process with each data model. Eventually down here, we'll get a pristine. There it is, wither model. I want wither skulls. Click on that. And now it's going to trade those for wither skulls. It's going to pull them out of here and take it right inside of my chest right here. So that's really all that it takes to automate. In here, you can make a very large simulation chamber farm. You could have one of these for every of, uh, type of data model available if you wanted to, and continuously be getting something uh, for the pristine model that you're trading it for. Uh, and then these models here, the overworld and hellish matters, those can be used in many different crafting recipes to also make items that are a little bit harder to get in the game. So having a simulation chamber farm 
is great for multiple reasons. It'll provide you with a lot of hard to get items in the game. It'll also automatically level up all these data models for you. All you have to do is get them to basic, toss them in here, and it's going to do the rest of the work. All right. Um, so that's that. Uh, again, if you have any questions about this, let me know, but let's go ahead and pop back out. And here we are. All right. So again, automating this system is not very hard. Um, of this way, I have it shown here. The only thing that's really manually loaded is your polymer. But again, I have a tutorial linked in the description of this video on how to automate making polymer infinitely. So you could just place that up here where this chest is, and that will feed polymer in automatically. And in a case where we're looking inside of our farm, the automated polymer setup will create polymer fast enough that it will provide it to all of these chests faster than these chambers are able to use them. So the polymer setup that is going to be linked below, will you only need one of them to power all of these inside of here. So uh, a great uh, resource to have. Takes just a little bit of time to set up, but once you have, uh, it's going to give you access to a lot of really great uh, resources. Wither Skulls being one of the best examples. Nether Stars, uh, Dragon's Breath Potions. There's a lot of really hard stuff to get. Gas Tears you can pull out of there. So uh, that's going to do it for this tutorial. If you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, uh, please be sure to put those down in the description and I will do my best to get back with you as quickly as possible, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com. At the bottom of the homepage is a place where you can submit questions, feedback, or recommendations via email. While you're there, you'll also find my streaming schedule, links to all my tutorials and videos, PC specs, links to my social media accounts, uh, as well as the ODG store, where you can get yourself some cool Only Draven Gaming merchandise if you are inclined. Uh, there's a lot of great resources on the website. I recommend checking it out. But that is going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.